Hey girl, thanks for picking me up. Reg took the trip to work, so I'm glad you let me ride shotgun today. Yeah, no problem. Hey, Lord, you ain't got to talk about it if you don't want to, but you good? Honestly, Matt, honestly, no, I'm, I'm not good. Yes, it's been weeks, but it still feels like Christmas Day all over again. Alex walked out, and it's like, I don't even know how to feel anymore. I get it. You've been carrying that weight for a minute now. But I told you, Jamie, you can't put this all on yourself. I mean, you're right. I know it's not all on me, but it's hard not to blame myself. Mother Baxter's been in Alex's head since the day we met. And we just stayed away from her, you know? But after COVID, it, we had no choice but to go to her for help. I should have known she used this as a chance to get her claws back in. Ugh, that woman. She's something else. You think that's what pushed Alex away? Her guilt? Or Mother Baxter's whole God's will routine? Well, to me it seems like both. Like everything we built together didn't even matter once Mother Baxter got back into the picture. All those sermons about sin and a relationship being wrong. She drilled that into Alex until, well, there was nothing left. And when we asked for that money, honey, it was over. That was the crack she needed to slip right back in. And Alex always called me selfish and self-centered, so I feel like I let this happen, Matthew. Like, I just didn't do enough. No, uh uh no, don't you do that, Jamie. No, you did what you had to do. The world was falling apart, and you both needed help. You weren't wrong for asking. Mother Baxter just saw her opening. That's all. Yeah, well, now I'm the one who's left. I couldn't compete with the church. With all that guilt she planted in Alex, we were together for 10 years. 10 years, Matthew, and now it's like I'm some kind of stranger. And she just sat back, didn't even offer a hand, till we were desperate. Now she uses this as her opportunity to leap in and dissolve our lavender marriage. I despise that woman. Little baby gal, this ain't your fault. I keep telling you that. Alex let her back in. You'll fight like hell to keep things together. But it's hard to fight what's been beat into you since you were a kid. Uh, I know, you're right. I just, I don't know, I thought we'd made it through the worst. I thought we were stronger than this, Matthew. You were strong. You are strong. Still are. But this ain't just about y'all. It's about breaking all that stuff we grew up with. It's why we're going to these classes, right? To break it down. Figure out what's real. What we want to hold on to. And what's just trauma disguised as truth. No, it's not just about us, is it? It's just hard letting go of what we had a lot harder than I thought it'd be. It's gonna take some time, baby girl. But you got people who care about you. You don't have to go through this alone. Good morning, dear. 
How's the nuptials going? I'm so proud of you. Good morning, Mother Baxter. It's it's going. How are you this morning? <laughs> I'm fine. I'm fine, dear. And just so expected that it seems like you finally come to your senses after all these years of well, you know, distractions. Uh, you've finally chosen the path of of God's been dighting you toward. Uh, we've been praying for you. It wasn't easy, Mother Baxter, but but I, I know it was time. I had to do what was best for the family. It, well, for me. Best for you? No, dear. It's what's best in the eyes of the Lord, Alex. Carl is a good man, honorable, and finally you're in a relationship that isn't well. It isn't an embarrassment, is it? One that brings you back. Into God's good grace, this is where you belong. Mother Baxter, Jamie wasn't in that. <clears throat> Jamie was a phase, a mistake. You've been forgiven. We've all prayed for you, Alex. And now look, God has answered our prayers. Respectable, dignified, the way things should be. You'll see. This is the life you're meant to lead, my dear. A life of honor, before God, and man. Yes, ma'am. You're you're right. Of course, I'm right, darling. I'm always right. Now, darling, enough of all this talk. Go, go and fetch Montague. Would you tell him to bring me my morning or oh, oh, when is it? I always have. Ah, yes, the the beluga carrier on the brioche toast, drizzled with that white truffle oil. Oh, oh, well, he sends those to get the side of imported gooseberries from Switzerland. Oh heavens, I cannot start my day without them. Ten, and don't forget. You heavy or for breakfast? Oh, 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 of course, my dear. One must maintain standards, Alex. You'll understand that more now. It's about time you embrace the life you were born into, my dear. Uh, uh, oh. Good morning, students, and welcome to our first class in deconstruction. How we. Break ourselves of the religious trauma that has kept us bound for all these years. My name is Bishop Polk, and I will be leading this class. How's everyone today? <laughs> With two, I guess I'll go first. That Ply Matthew, I'm twenty. I've been in a same-gender relationship with my partner Reggie for a few years now. I've been deconstructing my faith and beliefs for a while, so definitely not new to it. I grew up in a pretty conservative household, so it's been a journey, but I'm here now. <laughs> I'm actually here with my friend Jane. She's going through a really tough time right now, so I figure it might help for us to come together. I'll let her speak more on that if she's ready. No pressure, Janie. <laughs> no, right now, there, Matthew. We don't pressure in this classroom. This is a safe space. So when Jamie's ready to share, I'm sure she'll share. Is there anyone else? That wants to talk about what brought them here today. Uh, hi, I'm I, I'm Jaini, and I just I just spoke up with my girlfriend of ten years. I 
I've been thinking a lot about what happened with me and Alex, and I guess I feel like it's my fault. I mean, we were together for 10 years, but Alex, she, I mean, she always said it was selfish and I didn't care about what she needed, that I pushed back against her family and against her church, but that's only because I saw how toxic it was. And I didn't want Mother Baxter to control everything that we had built together. But maybe I was wrong for that. Maybe I just pushed too hard and and that's why Alex left. Maybe I didn't do enough to hold things together. Alex always called me self-centered, said only thought about myself. And I guess I'm starting to believe it. I fought so hard to keep them away from that religious guilt, but in me in, she went right back to it. I just feel like I wasn't enough. I feel like I let this happen. Jamie, thank you for sharing that with us. What you're feeling right now, this sense of guilt, of thinking you didn't do enough, it's a common response when someone you love is pulled back into a belief system that's deeply rooted in shame and control. Religious fundamentalism, especially in its most rigid forms, often creates a framework where people are taught to view their relationship through a lens of sin, guilt, and obligation. Unfortunately, it sounds like that's what Alex is going through. Fundamentalism thrives on the idea of control. Control over behavior, over beliefs, over relationships. It creates a dichotomy. There's a right way and a wrong way to live and that line is often drawn by leaders or by family members like mother baxter who believe they're protecting the people they love from eternal damnation but that kind of control it isn't love it's fear dressed up as righteousness It's important to understand that you didn't fail Alex. You weren't wrong for trying to protect her from a toxic influence. But religious trauma runs deep. Alex was caught between two worlds. One where she could be herself with you and another where she felt she had to conform to someone else's version of truth. And in many cases, the weight of that guilt can overwhelm even the strongest relationships. You didn't let this happen, Janie. Guess wasn't about you being selfish or not going enough. It's about the way fundamentalism manipulates love, turning it into something conditional. You fought for the love you shared, and that's never something to be ashamed of. Deconstructing these beliefs means letting go of that guilt. It's hard work, but it's the only way we free ourselves from the chains that religious shame has clipped on us and start building relationships based on acceptance, not fear. I want all of you to remember something fundamental as we go through this journey together. Love is not a tool for control. Love doesn't demand that you sacrifice your identity, your truth, or your happiness just to fit someone else's mold. Love, real love, is freedom. Freedom to be yourself. Freedom to choose your path. And freedom to grow. All right, we're out of time, unfortunately. Let's pick this up next time. Same time, same place. Take care of yourself. <laughs>